morning everybody come on in today we are going to go everywhere we have a tour to do we have to cover the greenhouse because I want you to see how my seeds came up and <laughs> before I thin them so um, we'll go out there plus we ordered some moringa tree seeds online um, Moringa is like one of the latest fads about the powder and the leaves being so good for you. And they cannot possibly grow in Canada. I mean, we have to cover our greenhouse six months of the year. Pretty soon it will be okay and we'll take it off until probably October. Um, all the plastic will come off. So. Uh, it's something we're used to, but it's well worth it. So we thought we'd try growing them. We're going to try some outside and see if they do well, whether they come up again in the spring from the roots. We're going to um, leave some in the greenhouse just to chop the leaves off and kind of harvest the leaves as they keep them smaller as bushes. So we're going to try a few things. So I'll take you out there. I just planted them yesterday so you won't see anything growing. And um, today was watering day and I started ab about nine o'clock and here it is quarter to eleven and I finished watering. Now um, I want to tell you, when I first started growing orchids, I was using plant prod and I still like it. And there's a time now for the ones that have finished flowering, uh, I'll take you on a tour of the orchids. They, most of them were out in bloom by the end of December, so we are almost at the end of April, so we've had a good uh, three to four months or so. Of flowers and some of them are still in flower will make it hit the five but for the ones that I've uh, trimmed the spikes or for essences off of um, I'm starting a different fertilizing routine and I wanted to share that with you um, we'll get into more detail than we have in some past videos I believe from everything I've read and for my orchids that I cut the fluorescences. If it's a really strong, healthy plant, I'll leave them on. But still, when they go outside to start their growing season, I will make sure they're all cut off. Now, some people say, oh, but they're going to use all that energy to grow another spike. Here, the weather is telling them to longer days, warmer nights, the weather is telling them to grow leaves and roots, and that's what we want them to do. And if we leave that spike on, there is uh, uh, chemistry things I don't understand, but I read about in the nodes themselves that keep trying to give out energy to flower, to flower, to flower. And uh, that's not what I want. I want healthy plants. And that's my view, and it's a very controversial view, but that's what I do. <clears throat> so I'll show you what I've done with a couple of the little flowers I've cut off. And I'll show you this. This is Plant Prod um, 15, 15, 18. Um, I used this when I first started growing orchids. And yes, it has a bit of urea, but so does the um, uh, Schultz's. And I'm not worried about it. And I read all about that too. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But anyway, a little bit's okay. So I've used this for ages. So now we're getting to time. The high middle number was for encouraged flowering. Now the ones that are still actively flowering, I am still using the Schultz's. Um, 18, 27, 18, and the 2MGO, the calcium. So, um, the other ones that are in between going outside and they're still here, they have no flowers, 
I've gone to a pretty well balanced fertilizer. It's not quite balanced, it's a high last number, which is for overall growth of your orchid. So I will use this until it's warm enough, I move them outside, then I will move to a higher nitrogen fertilizer. And something else um, I should mention, some people ask, do I have chlorine? Yes, I have chlorine. And when I first, our water ha is treated with chlorine. And when I first started with orchids, I never knew enough that it was bad or wasn't bad. It hasn't bothered mine. I don't worry about it. I like to keep things simple for us, kind of. Uh, we're not chemists. We're just trying to grow orchids in our home. We want to keep it simple. If we get too technical, then the fun may leave. So I don't want that to happen. Now, um, also, there is a lady that her son brought her Horella retricella. And um, a long time ago, I watered today, it's dripping, I ordered three minis. They went on a bark. I tried mounting them on bark for inside the house. It was uh, continuous work, but no rewards. So when I put them in here, I know I got lots of flowers. She's not in flower right now, but continuously flowering. So I ordered all three of these mini orchids a couple years ago, and there's not much online about most of them. But Herella retricella, and I'll show you a close-up. I made some cute little signs for them. So um, there she is, Herella retricella. I'm waiting for more shower, uh, flowers, and when they come, I'll show you. So all three of these are species. These have done nothing. This one has, this is uh, Fal and Anna Larry Sicardi. You can tell I don't have many species. Um, they haven't done anything but I have hopes. They seem happier now. So, um, yes, and there is some information on the internet that I have found, but very little. And Herella Raticella, you can water her every day if you got her in a real good draining medium. As long as that water's going right through, they like lots of water and they, they like lots of light too. So there's that. Now I'll just take this here. Now over the years, and not even right away when I started with orchids, um, probably I'd print, I might read 10 articles and print one. Whenever I find something really interesting, I print it out. I'm going to have my own little book here soon. It's gotten so now all the books I got I hardly read because I go back into my own information. But whenever I see something really good, so I print it out. So uh, I have done a lot of reading online and I keep a book and I make notes. And uh, I pick these little sleeves up because the articles that are all about one thing, I put them in, and uh, there's everything in here, everything. And I find it very informative, and you might like to, if you haven't thought of it, to start a book like that. And uh, <laughs> um, I love the Orchid Societies, I read them, I do not belong to one. but. Uh, Anyway, so that's that we've watered, and I'm going to take you around. We're going to tour the orchids. We're going to the greenhouse, and then I was trying to decide if I should go around the front to the rock pit or show you um, from the living room window. What do, you, <laughs> what do you think? Well, maybe we'll play it by ear, see how long this sketches out. So, um... You know, I'm sitting in this rock pit, and I picked all the little rocks, and Jack did the big ones. He was in the garage, and he heard rocks, hitting rocks outside. He'd come out. He says, I can't work in the garage. No, I, I, not when you're out here buying rocks. I said, just go. I'm just taking my time. 
you know, uh, I'll be 71 this year. I'm not in a big hurry. So it's like pick up a few rocks, walk them over, and you're not going to believe it when you see it. But anyway, we've got all the rocks where we want them, and we'll be cementing soon. So I wanted to show you what we've done. But as I'm sitting out there in this pile of rocks, it reminded me of a joke. And before we do our tour, I have to tell you this joke. There was this mother, and she had twins, twin boys. And um, one was a positive, uh, 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 um, always thought positive, optimist. That's what I was saying. One was an optimist, and the other one was a pessimist. So anyway, uh, she didn't know how to balance them out, and I guess she went to some psychiatrist or something, and, and they tried different things. So they put them both in these big areas or rooms, and with the uh, pessimist, they, um, they gave the pessimist all new toys in this big room. And the, the uh, optimist, they dumped a pile of manure in their room. So <laughs> they gave them quite a bit of time and then they went to peek in to see what the pessimist was doing. The pessimist was in there throwing these new toys. They weren't good enough and just, just uh, being a real B-R-A-T. So they just shut the door. They couldn't stand him. He was screaming and crying. He wasn't happy. So <laughs> then, <laughs> then they're going to go look at the optimist. So they, it seemed awful quiet in the room when they opened the door. And they opened the door. And here's the optimist on his knees going like this. And the mother goes, what are you doing? He says, where there's manure, there's got to be a pony. <laughs> I love that joke. Anyway, that's how I felt in the rock pit. <laughs> because uh, you really have to see something positive to continue. But we are continuing. And we have one really big surprise that won't be added to last that Jack has made. So anyway, let's go do our tour before I talk to you too much. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Now, here is the, the older orchid I had that almost died that we repotted in the drop wire bales. Those wires only cost $2 for a four foot section. And they're doubled. And they're wavy when they come. And they don't rust. So anyway, I repotted it. And it was in flower, but I was going from bark to bark. So, um... It never lost any flowers. It still looks really good. I love it when you repot from your medium to your medium. And uh, guess what? She decided to send out more flowers. So we are blessed. She's beautiful. She loves her new pot. They love these large road cones. And I just take them. I put them in the shower, I shower them down, I take my small watering can with a pinch of whatever fertilizer I'm using, after I've watered them down, I give them their fertilizer, let them sit for a while, and then I give them another rinse. So uh, the other row cone, the orchid is getting a nice new leaf, very happy. Things are growing. The ones in the back are mostly ones getting leaves. And Moon Glow, Moon Glow is still doing really well. I mean, four months, I'm not complaining. And uh, we still have some here. And uh, for some reason, Tequila Sunrise. And this is the orchid I put in a pot that it did not like. It was clay, it had black stuff in it, and it was the one that had all the bubbly leaves that um, it struggled and struggled. The last leaves weren't that good. When she's through flowering, she'll get her spike cut off, and I'm thinking big plans, she's going to be beautiful. 
but she decided to send out a few more flowers and I decided to let her have them and so with a lasting sunset. Also, she seems to be doing really well. So we're letting those ones have their extra flowers. And we'll go in the living room. I'm backing up. <laughs> Don't turn you around too quick. So, this road cone, same thing, been in the shower. Had a nice shower this morning, still wet. Look at the flowers. Oh boy, she's beautiful. She's happy, I mean leaves. This is what I want. This year I hope to get lots of leaves and not lose too many on my orchids. And this orchid is the last one we repotted, moss to bark, from the grocery store. I've still left her flowers on. They're still doing good. And Mom's Orchid, any of you people that have been with me a long time with the little red flowers that had no roots, it's down here and it's getting a nice new leaf. And I just soaked it in rooting hormone, put it in its normal bark, and I've been patient, and there's a nice new leaf. And one day before they all go outside, I'll be checking the roots, and that'll be an interesting video, but I think it really did good. And that was just powdered rooting home hormone, nothing special. And if you remember the older orchid that I had to put in the red pot because it was the only long pot I had, I didn't want to cut off her monopodial stem because she didn't have any roots up high, but look at this. I did give her rooting hormone too. She's got a root up high. I'm hoping for more, and that will really be good for her health. So, um, that was just a very quick tour here, because we are headed outside. But on the way, I have to show you a few things. You know, go out, if you see flowers, pick some flowers. For Scythe is one of the first signs of spring we get here. And so I just brought some for Scythea in, just to enjoy in the kitchen. Okay, and we're headed this way. On the table are uh, the orchids that I have cut off. Now if you use like a lemon soda um, and a little bit of bleach in your vase, the flowers will last a long time. So this is one of the amaryllis, the last flower one before I put it outside, and the two little orchids for the table. They, that, those were tea light holders and I found some little vases and they look much nicer than the tea lights and I can keep filling them up with flowers, which I like to do. So over here, the armorillus, the red one has come out full. The red one is full, and it looks like the two, because I had got these at a garage sale a couple of years ago. Last year, I didn't get one off of these, but now they're big enough. Two red ones coming. And this one over here is going to be a paler one. I'm not sure what color, but I'm thinking we should have them for close to Easter weekend. So I'm quite happy about that. Okay, now outside we go. Now in front of me is a table. We were at a garage sale. The legs were off it. The legs are really good. And I asked the lady, how much is that? She says, oh, $20. No one would want it. Well... It's, oh, oh, it's uh, like 150 years old. It's tiger oak. And we're going to refinish it. I know antiques, they say, don't touch them. But this one isn't, I don't think, good enough to keep. But when we refinish it, it'll be beautiful. So that'll be the heat of the summer project. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, guess what? <coughs> Grad sale. We found another sewer pod. It's not a triplet. It's a double. So 
I'm not too sure what we're going to do with it, but that's how the triple sewer pots looked before <laughs> they actually got an orchid in. So um, let's go out to the greenhouse. It was actually nice enough. Jack mowed the lawn yesterday. This is the only lawn we have because of all the rocks in the front yard. <laughs> but I see tulips are coming up. This little guy, he looks quite happy. So, yeah, well, this is the start of spring here. Tulips are barely out. We've still had freezing and lots of frost. So in the nights, the nights are quite cold, but I got weeding to do here. One day, soon. <laughs> okay, let's go in the greenhouse. I opened it up early. Oh boy. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the geraniums. I've had these four to five years and every year they get better and better. They're just waiting to go outside but it's still, we had ice yes, the other morning on the fountains, so, and not yet, but they are beautiful. And mom's sweet peas, they were just seeds on the last video, and they can go out soon. So, looking forward to that. And up here, these, keep the eyes on these containers, these are the moringas. They're in there somewhere. <laughs> Moringa seeds. Now, if you remember, when I planted the tomatoes, I planted, I said, three to four seeds in every pot. Oh my goodness, look at this. Every one of them has come up. Now some of the real healthy ones I'll probably save in another pot. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna, I only want one in a pot, so you know what I'm gonna do. Um, <laughs> yeah. So they came out really good. And the peppers that we saved the seeds from the Mexican peppers we eat. These were really long, narrow, sweet red peppers. And look at this, saving the seeds, they've all come up. And uh, melons, cantaloupes. And these are the little sweet peppers. I chopped them up and froze them, we used them all. And I had like two rows of them in the garden. So they're doing good. Cucumbers are doing good. Nothing happened with my cauliflower or broccoli or eggplant. Not too worried about that. We're still picking the odd lemon. Um, yeah, there's a few in there. But we've been eating lemons all year and it's, uh, it, needs, uh, it needs summer and it'll start getting new leaves. We have baby oranges coming everywhere. I see lots of little oranges. Yeah. That'd be good. And lots of new lemons, too. Don't get me wrong, but we've been eating them all winter. So, oh, the fish are waiting to be fed. So that's what's happening in the greenhouse. And we are about to head. I guess we'll go around to the front yard. Maggie's not going to be very happy because... Um, she doesn't like her mom leaving her. <laughs> Over there, the plastic, that's our peach tree because during the rainy, I'm going to call it the rainy season, early spring, when we get our rain, they, these will go all terrible and the fruit won't be good. So last year we covered it and this year, just for the rainy season, we take it off and uh, we get more peaches that way. So, okay, let's go down. Little birdies in the feeder. Mum likes watching from her window at all the little birds. He, Maggie can't come because she's not that friendly to other little dogs, and there's some especially she doesn't like. Okay, let's go down. Uh -huh. Jack's hiding. I don't know who caught him, but he was. He took off. He is so camera shy. Lots of tulips coming up. So spring is nice. I love spring. Little frogs waiting, wondering what's going to happen to him. He used to be at the pond. Well, we'll find a spot for him. So nice to hear the birds chirping. 
Okay, here we are at the rock pit. And uh, it's lucky we can have a vision of what it's going to look like. But the big baskets of chicken wire that I sewed up are now full of rocks. So um, that will all be cemented and turned into a big boulder. And this one here will be all cemented, turned into a boulder. And we've thinned out the rocks a lot because real small gravel will go all through here and then there will be big rocks and some bigger rocks. And there's a real surprise coming. That's sort of start of it, but that there's going to be something hanging there and he, Jack has made something very fantastic. Oh! <laughs> there he is. He threw it out here. He didn't come. <laughs> that will hang from that stand and it turns around. It's on uh, a swivel. Uh, I forget what you call it. It's going to have something surprising in it. And that's the same barbed wire drop he used for the baskets. It's cheap. It doesn't rust. It's great. So wait till you see this. It's going to be down in the center. It's going to be hanging off of this stand, which we are cementing the stand. Uh, <laughs> big plants, big plants. So uh, here we are on this beautiful day, kind of sunny and cloudy. And <laughs> that's it for today. And we'll see what happens if we can get at least one of these done soon. So bye for now and thank you for joining me.